Let's get going. We're using the hand weights today. If you don't have hand weights, of course, you can just substitute with anything else that you've got lying around the house with a bit of weight in it. Try some books or some water bottles or um, just get creative, whatever you've got, really. So we're going to place the feet right underneath our hip joints, <clears throat> standing up as tall as we can. Let those arms relax by our side. Nice lift to the pelvic floor and drawing that tummy in towards your spine. So nice big breath in. And then we're going to roll down, remembering pregnant friends that if you're not happy with rolling all the way down, if you're a little bit dizzy being upside down, then you just need to roll halfway. It's fine. We're just kind of getting the body warmed up, ready for our exercise, rolling down. Breath in at the floor and rolling up. That's just my dog knocking over my water bottle. <sighs> Puppy life, rolling down. And rolling up. Good, taking those arms out to the side, moving straight into some side bends. So on the inhale, over we go, exhale up. Inhale over, exhale up. Opening up through your ribcage, giving your side bodies a nice little stretch. Maybe with each one, reaching a little bit further or sticking with the same level, whatever feels good for your body. So we're going to do one more time each side. Last one here. And moving through a gentle rotation, turn the palms to face the ceiling, we'll bend those knees, keep the bottom half of the body nice and stable. Gentle double twist. Keeping the shoulders down, of course. Just getting a little bit of movement in that spine today. And then we'll do one more time. Good, and taking the arms down, giving the shoulders a bit of a roll. So straight away, I'm gonna grab these hand weights. I'm going to place them just in my hands, might just move to the side so I don't disturb the old puppy here. So I'm going to take my feet not too wide and I'm not going to over turn out my hips either. So sort of just a slight turn out of the hips. I'm going to place the weights just by our shoulders like so and then we're going to bend our knees. We're leaning slightly forward and as we lean forward we're going to press those weights up. So press and stand tall. So from the side on, we want to support the spine. We're only leaning forward a tiny little bit. Down and up. Nice one. Keep those shoulders down. We want the knees to go over the toes. Really support the lower back with those abdominals. And we're going to go about five more times. Five. And four, and three, and two, and one. Good. This time we'll leave the legs as they are, just bringing the weights basically um, underneath your chin here. And we'll continue to do the same thing. We can probably go down a little bit lower. That's the way. Keeping our lower back supported as always. Five, four, three, two, squeezing your glutes on the way up, and one. 
nice work. Bring those legs back together. We're going to take the arms out to the side and we're going to take one leg out and then bring it back in. So you see I'm just kind of hovering it off the floor. I'm not actually putting any weight on it here. Focusing on our shoulders and a little bit of balance. Stand nice and tall. Strong supporting leg. Two and one to the back. Arms will come forward. Just sliding it in and out. Not touching the floor. Really strong supporting leg. Kneecap lifted. Quads contracted, arches of your foot lifted, three, two, and one. We're going to go for goalpost arms here as we slide forward with the leg. And four, three, two and one. Ready to do all of that to the other side to give those shoulders a bit of a roll. Just step to the side slightly so I don't wake up the dog. All right, so set up. Let's get our core engaged, the shoulders back and the arms are going to shoot out to the side and in time with our leg. Strong supporting leg, lift that kneecap. Pull up those quads. Good, four more times. Four, three, oh, let me lost my balance, two, and one straight into behind. The arms will come forward. And just three more times, I think. Three, two, don't forget about your supporting leg, and one. Good, goalpost arms, leg comes forward. Yes. Nice. Really strong in that core. Keep those shoulders down. Just three more times. Three, two, and one. Both feet down, relax those arms, give the shoulders a bit of a roll and we're going to come all the way down to the floor, coming down to the mat <laughs> and we're going to come onto our spine here, just finding that neutral alignment. And remember anybody joining me, any expecting mothers, please make sure you prop up your head and chest if you feel dizzy lying down. Um, I seem to be all right at the moment at 24 weeks, but soon I'll definitely be having to prop up my body here. So we're starting with some toe taps. So we're gonna lift one knee into tabletop and just tap. So it's nice and, then, nice and easy, nice and fundamental. We're just focusing on the position of our pelvis, making sure it doesn't move out of its neutral position, working the hip flexor and the lower abs and of course in a minute we're going to get the arms going with the weights so this is just a little reconnection to our core hopefully the dog will settle down before we get into the next stuff ah the leg that's it tap lift tap Lift, good, pelvis hasn't moved. I know you can't really see my neutral spine because Oscar's in the way, but there's a small gap under my lower back. Although my body has <laughs> changed quite a lot. Not as much of a gap as there used to be. And just two more times, two and one. Nice, straightening out one of your legs. We're just gonna do a straight leg lift and lower. So there's no need to um, put any pressure on yourself to get your leg really high because look what happens to your glutes. They lift straight up off the mat. So neutral spine, we only lift the leg as high as we can while still keeping the pelvis in its neutral spine. 
Good. If you want to, you can place the hands behind your head and come into a chest lift and hold your chest lift while you do this. If you want an extra challenge, not a great one for pregnant women, so I'll keep my head flat. <laughs> and we're going to swap our legs over. Now, straight into it. Up, down, up, and down. That's it. Keeping that um, pelvis neutral position. Draw those ribs together. And we'll do three more times. Three, two, and one. Good. Both legs down. Pelvic curl. Let's roll up and rolling down. So just getting our spine ready for movement. Love a nice pelvic curl. Making sure you're squeezing your glutes at the top and concentrating on as much as you can, rolling down one vertebra at a time. Rolling down. Up we go. So much for hoping that the dog would just stay asleep. <laughs> Rolling down. And let's do two more times. Two. And last one, rolling down. All right, I'm going to grab the hand weights. We're going to make our way up to a sitting position and take the weights straight out in front. So we take the arms up and we're going to bring them forward. <laughs> arms up and bringing them forward. So remember that if you struggle to sit in this position with your legs straight out in front, then the best thing to do is to bend those knees. It's way better than hanging back like so. Nice. Inhale, up, exhale forward. So when we're sitting like this, it's actually more challenging than when we're lying down, obviously. We have to really think about our core, our back extensors. We're doing four, Three, two, and one. Oh, hard work, right? Pull those elbows back, straighten them out. Lots of work for the shoulders. Pull them back, straighten them out. Pull them back, straighten them out. Yes, keep that core strong. Three, two, and one. We're going to give our shoulders just a little bit of a break. So we're going to do little um, arcs, I suppose, up and down. You can just tap them lightly on the mat each time. Bring it forward, arc them up, tap the side, that's it. Try and concentrate on keeping your back nice and long. Pulling your tummy muscles in to your spine. And we'll do three more times. Three, two, and one. And we're going to take both weights into one. Um, into one hand for some bicep curls. So we'll just stay facing the side. We can keep the elbow nice and low. <laughs> up and down. Up and down, that's it. So same principle applies. We want to keep our spine nice and long and straight, sit up nice and tall. Good. And four and three and two and one. Now we're going to go out to the side. So I'm externally rotating that shoulder joint. Same 
thing though, still a bicep curl, still keeping that elbow fairly close to your waist, unless your weight or whatever you're holding is not heavy enough, and then you can take your elbow further away from you. So that's how you would make it harder. Keep the core strong. <laughs> Three, and two, and one. We're gonna swap our arms over to the other side. Please stop nibbling my hand there. All right, so I'm going to take both weights in the other hand, <laughs> squaring up the shoulders and the hips, really sitting as tall as we can. That's it. Not forgetting about your tummy muscles. And four, three, two, and one. Externally rotate that shoulder joint. I know you can't see the weight very well there, so maybe I'll just spin around like so, just to the side. So I've got my shoulder turned out. Still very postural, I'm still trying to sit up as tall as I can. And four, three, two, and one, and ooh, get out of the way, and relax. Give those shoulders just a little bit of a roll. So I'm gonna come into a sitting position here. So I want you to just cross your legs one over the other. We're still, this is a um, mostly arm um, focused class in case you haven't already figured that one out. Um, also puppy focus, which is loads of fun. So taking the arms straight out to the side. Again, postural, but at least you've got the um, stability of your knees here. So a little tip, shove a pillow behind your hips there and it will help tip your pelvis forward and just make your life easier sitting tall. So taking the arms out to the side and we're doing some small circles here like so. Focusing on those shoulders. So drop the arms a little bit lower if it feels too challenging. Good. And we're gonna go back the other way with the circle, so nice and small and round. It's starting to feel quite heavy. Four, three, two, and one. Bring those arms down. Good, we're gonna take the arms back, the weights back towards our shoulders. We're just gonna punch up and lower down. So we're gonna try not to hyperextend our elbows with each one. So see how my elbow is not quite getting all the way straight. If I was to go straight, my arm would look like that. See how it's beyond straight. So we just kind of go to almost straight, not quite straight. And this is, would be especially important if you were holding re something really heavy in your arms, in your hands. Good. All right, so we're gonna go both at the same time after this next one. And both up and down. Looking underneath my armpit and up and down. Both up, both down. Both up, both down. And four and three. And two, and one. Good, leave one arm up to the ceiling. Just place the other arm down on the mat. You can take it a little bit further away. And we're just gonna let the weight of that dumbbell assist with our side stretch here. So it should feel, first of all, pretty tough in the arms, but 
we should get a little bit of a deeper stretch down that side. So let's come all the way back up. So I'm just rolling this weight out as I go. Over we go. If the neck feels icky, just turn to face the side. Watch this supporting shoulder doesn't creep up. Up we come. Over. And up. We're going to do one more time. Keep that core strong. Over we go. And up. Good. Let's swap our arms over nice and carefully. It's good. He's quiet. I'm just going to scoot over a little bit. Ready to tilt the other way. Over. Find your stretch. Hang out here for a few seconds and up we come. Over we go and up we come. Over we go, sliding that weight out. And careful not to tilt too far if you feel any, this is pregnant friends, feel any pressure in those obliques. Just keep it really small or just put the weight down. That's it. And last one. And up we come. We're going to bring that weight down. Great. So we're going into some tricep um, tricep presses, I guess they're called, tricep pulls, I'm not even sure of the real term, but we're just going to take one weight above our head, behind, so the elbow is going to stay pointing straight up to the ceiling, and press up, and down. So if you want to, if you feel um, like you trust yourself to hold both weights in the one hand, when it's behind your head like this, go for it, or choose something heavier, your choice. has he got? I don't think you need to be chewing that. <laughs> up and down. That's it. Up and down. So we're going to go into some pulses into, in just a second. Three and two and one. So we're going to come down halfway and do little pulses here. I have jelly arms by the end of the session today. That's it. Sit up nice and tall. And four, three, two, one, and all the way down. Good. We're going to take uh, the weight in the other hand. Up we go. Get set up so that elbow, we want it pointing straight up to the roof and behind the head. Up and behind the head. No biting, nope. Up and behind. Up and behind. Keep the core nice and strong. Three, going into the pulses in just a minute, two, and one. So let's come down halfway, little pulses. Oh, sharp little teeth, stop that. And five, four, three, two, and one carefully all the way down. Nice. Give those shoulders a bit of a roll. Okay, so we're going to come into a side lie position and I'm going to grab this um, cushion just for my elbow, but you can, oh, that might not go well, but we'll see what, see what happens. Um, thought he might eat it. Anyway, here we go. So I'm going to take one leg 
um, long, the other leg onto the floor. And what I want to be able to do is lift up like so. So make sure that underneath leg is um, not going to slip there. So really important to watch this supporting shoulder here and to keep your ribs lifted. All right, so nice and easy to start with. We're just going to lift up and then we're going to lift down. So you can choose to use this top arm movement if you like, or you can choose just to leave it on your hip. Up and over, up and ow, over, ow for the dog, not for the exercise, and stop it. Okay, new plan, I'm getting rid of this. I knew that wouldn't go well. Maybe he would just eat it, and lower, or it just eats me. Oh dear, up and lower. So we'll go four and three and two and one. Good, we're going to stay here and we're going to see if we can lift this top leg. So I'm just going to pop my arm somewhere in space there. Stop it. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. So holding your arms straight out in space or holding your puppy, whatever you feel you need to do right now to get through the exercise. But it's a tough one. We want to stay supported on that shoulder. Five, four, three, two, and one. And down. Good. Bring both those legs in. Lifting up and stretching over. Nice. All right. Getting set up for the other side. <laughs> what a nightmare. Okay. So, here we are. We're going to make sure, we're just going to check that we're all aligned before we get going for the exercise. So watch that supporting shoulder. All right, up we go and down with the arm over and down. Keep going with that arm if you can, over and down. Up and down. So up and down. Three more times, three and two, ready for the leg. So let's hold and one, let's lift that leg and up. So if you can, just holding the arm up in space, up and down. Four, three, <laughs> he just thinks it's one big game. And two and one and down, pull those knees in, lift up and over for a bit of a stretch. Oh dear. All right, good. So we're going to turn over onto our hands and knees and hopefully this works. As in, I can distract the puppy long enough to be on my hands and knees, that is. Okay, so we've got hands and knees here. We're going to go straight into it in case I don't have much time. We're going to go for the actual yoga version of the cat-cow today. So we're going to go with the upper body and the lower body together. So round that lower back. Pull your sit bones together. Push into your hands. Back to neutral. Lift the sternum to the ceiling. Gently sink the lower back, widening those sit bones. So we want to go both at the same time. Nose towards your tailbone. And then the opposite way, we've got the back of your head towards your tailbone. And the idea is that we just get as much movement through our spine as possible. So these days, this is about as far as I can go in my extension without too much stretching of the abdominals, which I'm trying to avoid. But it's still nice to get that lovely movement 
in the spine. So we just want to keep it as controlled and as gooey as we can. Let's do two more. Exhale round the spine. Inhale, we'll come back to neutral. Exhale, arch the spine. Inhale, come back to neutral. All right, so now we're gonna wag our tail. So I'm bringing my shoulder towards the top of my pelvis and then the other side. So I'm just sort of using my obliques here to control this movement. That's wagging that tail. So again, I'm losing <laughs> the ability to move my um, whole pelvic region as much as I had before. So um, I'm sure your movements are bigger and better than this. And now we're going to join those two exercises together. So we're going to come through our cat position all the way around through the cow and to the other side. So just basically nice big circles, getting that spine all gooey. As much as you can. Back the other way. <laughs> and we'll finish with one last cat cow here. Hopefully being able to go straight into a plank. So if you can, just one leg back. Remember, it's absolutely fine to plank on your knees. If you do that, I'll show you the variation just in a sec. But lifting straight up if you're feeling strong. Holding your plank if you're on your knees. Looks a little bit like that. Holding, keeping that core in. If you like, a few rocks back and forth, only if you want to. You can do a few leg lifts here. Pregnant friends, I'd be very careful with that unless you're already really strong and been doing it for a long time, sticking with the plank and possibly even just with the knees on the ground. So we're gonna hold for 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, bring those knees in, give the wrists a bit of a roll around, nice. All right, so finishing just with a nice little hamstring stretch today. Um, I'm gonna see how I go with this again, just popping it under my knee. And I'm gonna step one foot forward and just pressing through. So hip flexor stretch first, giving our front leg, because I've got my back leg forward, so switching that front leg out like so. Hands on the front knee, just gently lifting your chest up towards the ceiling. No need to drop that head back too far. And we're gonna move into a hamstring stretch here. So you can take both your hands down onto the floor and we're gonna send the hips back like so, just stretching out our front leg. Trying to send the tailbone back behind us, lengthening the spine, pull those shoulders down, perhaps flexing that front leg, front foot, see how you feel. And we're gonna move through a hip flexor stretch and into a hamstring stretch. Forward into a hip flexor stretch, back into a hamstring stretch. Forward and back forward and back. So the whole movement is controlled. We're definitely not bouncing into these two stretches. Good, holding that hamstring stretch for three, two and one and we'll swap our legs over now. So stepping the other leg forward, finding your stretch, lifting your chest up to the roof Nice, noticing how different it feels side to side. And then we're 
going to take our hands down to the floor, ready for our hamstring stretch, a nice and slow, easing into it, sending your tailbone back behind you. Maybe you get this front leg straight, maybe you don't quite. And of course, flexing that foot just to make it a little bit more intense if you want to. Good. So we're going to get some dynamics happening here. So we're going to move into a hip flexor stretch and back to a hamstring stretch. Into the hip flexor stretch and back into the hamstring stretch. So you can see I'm not over stretching myself here. We, if you want to um, work a bit harder, by all means go for it. I'm just protecting my body these days. <laughs> and back. Being careful not to overstretch. <laughs> Three. And two. And last one. Good. We're going to bring my leg all the way back in here. And just um, a last little bit of torture just before we get back up onto our Feet is some hovers here, so you're going to tuck those toes, hands are planted, you can be in your elbows if you like, I'm just going to lift and lower, lift and lower, very nice, holding that core strong, keep those shoulders down, you can see my elbows are not locked, three and two, hold that last one and hold, Rock back and forward. Rock back and forward. Sit back and forward. So that was just a last little piece of torture for the shoulders. And well, this is a full body exercise really, isn't it? <laughs> and back and forward. Holding here if you can. Can we straighten out one leg? Pull it in and the other. Pull it in. Keep those shoulders down. Pull it in. Up. And down. Good. Nearly finished. Nearly at the end. And we're going to do two more to each side. Two. And one. And we're going to walk those feet in, then followed by the hands. Then we're already up on our feet and we're going to roll all the way up. Okay, so finding your space on the mat, nice and tall, breath in and exhale, rolling down. Breathing in at the floor and rolling up on your exhale. Tummy to spine. Two more times. And your last one. And we're all done. Thank you so much for joining me for another crazy puppy Pilates session. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs>